This is the second lecture on inverse functions. The first one was a, con a conceptual approach to inverse functions, and now we're doing inverse function notation. They do have a special notation, inverse functions do, but it's also a flawed notation, which I'll mention in a moment. The only prerequisite that you'll need, really, is to know the concepts of inverse functions. And that means that all the prerequisites for the concept for inverse functions, those are all prerequisites for this as well. So you have to know about functions, domain range, and all that fun stuff. At the end of the last lecture, the conceptual lecture, I had mentioned the definition of an invertible function. A function who, whose outputs lead to single unique inputs is called an invertible function. just want to mention that here because we're about to use that language in another definition. And that definition is for function notation. Let f be an invertible function, which we just said is just a function whose outputs come from unique or single inputs. Then we denote the inverse function that is related to f by this notation or sometimes more often actually by this notation. I think a lot of students get confused about this. f is the name of the function here. f of x is the value of the function evaluated at x. So its inverse has a, has a name f and I'm not going to say raised to the negative one. Instead you say f inverse and then that value is the function inverse function value evaluated x is f inverse of x. A couple things I need to warn you about here. f inverse is not equal to 1 over f. It's a, such an unfortunate notation that they chose, or whoever chose it, for inverse function notation. They should have gone with something absolutely different because we have negative exponents. And so we're so used to seeing a negative exponent and saying, well, rip off the negative and drop that downstairs. But when you're talking about a function f, that's a function name. And when I see a negative 1 as a superscript, I know they mean the inverse of f. Not necessarily 1 over f. It's the inverse of f. Whatever machine undoes f. Extremely unfortunate notation. And uh, I would love if somebody would come in and actually change that notation. Personally, I would love to see something like arc f or something like that. The reason why I choose arc f is because in trigonometry uh, you deal with inverse functions and they always title their inverse functions or pre-title them with an arc. So it'd be an arc cosine or an arc sine or something like that. Not that you need to know that, but it's a better notation than this. This sucks. Anyhow, another thing that uh, is from poor notation here. I will often like to write f inverse of y. Now, we're so new to this, you don't, you probably don't know or understand why I choose to write it that way, but let me just tell you, if a function is equal to f of x, in other words, if, I'm sorry, if, if my function name is f of x, so in other words, y is equal to f of x, that means for my function, I'm plugging in x values, and I'm getting out y values, correct? So, remember from our previous conversation with the conceptual conversation, with inverse functions, the inputs for an inverse, what goes inside these parentheses, should be the outputs of our original function. This is technically absolutely 100% correct. But the problem is, that every single textbook that I've ever seen writes this as y equals f inverse of x. In other words, they use this notation. And I think it's a very poor notation because it's, it's extremely confusing. And in real world problems, you would never, 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 never swap those variables. But every single textbook teaches you to swap variables. There's only one reason to swap variables. Nope, there are only two reasons to swap variables. One reason is for graphing. That's actually the only real reason. 
That's the real reason right there for swapping variables. If you're going to have to graph an inverse function, you have to swap variables. That is very true. Okay, fine. I'm all right with that. Okay. The second reason, which is not a real reason, but it's a reason that most students have to contend with these days, is for online homework programs or online homework systems, they all swap variables, and every textbook does as well. So because if you're using an online homework system, it's going to require you to swap variables at some point if you find an inverse. And finally, your old instructor, not your old, your previous, I mean your old school instructor, your instructor who doesn't know why they do something, they just do it. Uh, you should ask your instructor actually why. Besides graphing, why do I swap variables? And they'll probably have no answer for you. If they do, come back, tell me. And I'll give you, uh, I'll probably argue it with you, but, but that's absolutely fine. I think that these last two points are not valid enough to swap variables. This one right here, pretty valid to swap variables if I'm going to graph. Now all of this makes very little sense to you, so I'm going to come back to this uh, in a, probably another lecture here when I when I go to graphing these things and, and finding equations or function, that, yeah, basically equations for inverses. But for now, let's go ahead and learn to use function notation, inverse function notation. By the way, you're probably wondering why I say there are only two reasons to swap variables, and there are actually three reasons here. It's just because of an old joke. There are three kinds of mathematicians, those who can count and those who can't. Haha. -ha. Now to talk about function notation here and how we're going to use it, I'm going to go back to some of the examples we had in the conceptual lecture. Here we had a function name f. So we, when you plug 2 into f, f of 2 turned into 10. When you plug 3 into f, f of 3 was 12, and so on and so forth. So all these imply that f of 2 is equal to 10, and f of 3 is equal to 12, and, and so on and so forth. But now that we know that these two are inverses from the conceptual le lecture, remember g undid f, g and f are inverses, uh, the inputs of one become the outputs of the other and vice versa. In other words, the domain of f is the range of g and the range of f is the domain of g. Okay. Well, because of that, I now know that g another name for g and probably a more proper name for g is f inverse. And the unfortunate notation, f inverse of x, and I'll show you as an example why this is a bad notation in a moment. But let's go ahead and just say what this implies. This implies that f inverse of 10 is equal to 2. And f inverse of 12 is equal to 3. And f inverse of 14 is 4, and so on and so forth. Right. Notice that the inputs for f lead to outputs, and those outputs are now the inputs for the inverse of f. Now, again, I hate, 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 hate this poor notation. But that's not your fault. That's the fault of every mathematician in the world. This f of x, we always call y, right? The input is x, the outputs are y. So another name for f of x is y. Well, if the inverse takes those outputs as its inputs, oops, that should be an inverse sign, then when I plug in those outputs into the inverse, it should return the original inputs. I like that notation so much better. It just makes sense, right? It's like you just swapped columns. That's really all you're doing. So what a frustrating notation that, that all mathematics has kind of adopted. Again from the previous lecture on the conceptual uh, approach to inverse functions, I told we found out that f and g here were inverse functions, so in reality there's no reason to call that a g. It should actually be f inverse, officially f inverse. And really, since it 
doesn't really matter what variable letters I use. I can make this F inverse of happy face if I really wanted to, right? It doesn't really matter what variable I use. A lot of people use X because they're just happy with using X's all the time. But in reality, it doesn't really matter what variable you use. So if it doesn't matter what variable I use, I'm going to do this. F inverse of Y is equal to Y plus 2 over 3. Just because it makes sense to me. This makes absolute sense. Now let's see why this makes sense in this not only this case but all cases because let's say we want to evaluate f at 30 so I plug in x equals 30 so wherever I see an x here I replace it with a 30 so this is nothing new just evaluating a function that's 30 times 3 times 30 is 90 minus 2 which is 88 now remember this is a y value is this an output I plugged in a value of x I should have gotten out a value of y the inverse should take that and return back the original input so the inverse function which I'm gonna say my inputs are the outputs of my regular old function so the y values the inverse I'm gonna plug in that output of 88 well let's see the inverse is just y plus 2 or 88 plus 2 over 3. 88 plus 2 is 90 over 3 is 30. And remember if you look at this notation f inverse of y so we're plugging in y will get out x so this should equal x and it does. Originally we started with x equals 30 it changed into a y equals 88 we plugged in y equals 88 into the inverse it turned back into x equals 30. But again your textbook will never say I don't I'm taking a, a wild stab if you have a textbook that doesn't say what I'm about to say then uh, you've got the first textbook that I've ever seen without this notation but most every textbook I've seen has this oh you know f inverse of x is x plus 2 and we've just found out that when you plug x plus 2 over 3 I'm sorry and we just found out that when we plug x equals 30 into our function well that returns 88 so f inverse of x but wait a second I thought x was 30 see that's what's confusing that's confusing to me so f inverse of the of the input for f inverse which would be the output for f is going to be equal 88 plus 2 over 3 88 plus 2 over 3 is 90 over 3 or in other words 30 and you say oh that's what y is but it's not what y is it was what x is ah oh, that's why i hate the way other books do it anyway you get the idea of f, of the function notation the inverse function notation it operates just like function notation when you're plugging things in you're getting answers out that type of thing there's no difference notice I did not do I did not do 1 over f of something at any point I never did that right so don't think that that's what you're doing if you make that mistake uh, it's because you're you're associating this with an exponent this is not an exponent like to knock that out of your head you're gonna forget it at some point I guarantee it so this is an incredibly short lecture actually for the lectures that I do they tend to be too long uh, but on the next lecture we're gonna deal with how to create the inverse function in other words how do we find out what the inverse function is when somebody gives me a function so that's what you get to look forward to